Hi, this is Michael from Binary Cafe with a Brainy Phase Project video. The Sony DSC HX300 has a background defocus effect. I'm going to show you how to use this. It allows you to maintain focus on your subject and blur out the background. The camera takes two pictures to achieve this effect. The most important thing is you need to make sure that you've got the proper distance from the subject and you need to make sure that the objects are not moving because the camera will tell you couldn't perform the defocus effect if you have movement. So try I try again if that's the case but it's pretty easy to do you just put the camera into scene mode navigate through the icons to the uh, little icon there it's the second one with a person in the mountains or the trees blurred out and it's background defocus if you go back into menu you can actually go down and choose the amount of defocus you've got low medium or high and that's going to affect the amount of blur that is in the background I tend to do this on medium or high because it's a little bit more obvious obvious you know to to see the effect in the background so the most important thing about this is down at the bottom it says recommended distance to subject pay attention to that there are 3.28 feet in a meter so if it says for example two meters it's going to be about six and a half seven feet and just make sure that you look at that hold the shutter down halfway to focus on your subject click and you'll have your picture if it doesn't work the first time try again now let's take a look at how to do this in photo Photoshop, and this is a pretty cool way to take your existing photos and apply the background defocus effect and get it just right. So I've got a picture of a bird feeder here, and this one was actually shot without background defocus, but because of the distance of the different objects in the background here, it does look like it's slightly blurred out, but let's compare that. If I go in and do a file open, I'm going to open up the one that I shot with background defocus high, and you can see very plainly that there's a big difference between those two when the background defocus is applied. But if you've used the background defocus on the Sony cameras, you may notice that it doesn't do a perfect job. As a matter of fact, if I look right here on the bird feeder, I can see that it has blurred out a portion of the image and I don't want it blurred out. Let me open up another file here. I've got a picture of the frog and I'm going to open up the one that does not have blur. You can see in the background that I've got my hammock and other objects are pretty well maintained in focus. And if I do a file open and open up the one that I shot with the blur, let's see. Yeah, there's a pretty big difference there. And this one, it did a pretty good job. The camera actually takes two pictures and it goes through the process of identifying what was in focus. And then it takes a blurred out version of the image and it actually does all of the work inside the camera. But I think that sometimes I'd rather do the work myself, especially if I don't want to take the time to go in and do the setup. I have to put the camera into the scene mode and I've got to go into the menu, choose the type of background defocus, whether it's low, medium, or high, and that can take a couple minutes and I don't usually see the results immediately on the screen. And in some cases, I just want to shoot the picture and not have to worry about, you know, couldn't perform the defocus procedure in the camera because that's frustrating. A lot of times you're, you're someplace where you take a picture, it is windy. The item's moving around and background defocus doesn't do a good job. And I really want to avoid something like that. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes here and show you in Photoshop. This is Photoshop Creative Cloud. And I'm going to show you how to go in and very quickly do the same type of effect. The idea here is to take selection tools and highlight the object. So in this case, what I'm going to do is use the lasso tool. And if I go up here and I choose the lasso tool, I can move my pointer out on the screen here and I can see that I've got my lasso tool with a little pointer. And if I were to just click and drag the mouse around, I would have a selection and I could perform tasks on that selection. I'm going to deselect this by holding down control on the keyboard and pressing D because that's not the part I really wanted to select. And if the tool is confusing, and I think the tool, it's better than it used to be. It used to be really confusing in previous versions of Photoshop, which part was actually the selection point in a lasso. But now they've got that arrow. That helps a lot. But if you press the caps lock key on your keyboard, it will toggle from the icon to a crosshair. And it's really hard to mess that up because you know the middle point of the crosshair right in the dead center. That is your selection point. So that's a quick way to go back and forth between the two tools. 
And I am going to basically freehand draw a selection around this. Now this is freehand and there are many different ways that you can select your objects in Photoshop and I could actually do another tutorial to talk about paths, the Bezier pen tool and a few other selection tools but this is a very quick way to go in and draw around the item and I'm not doing a perfect job here but that's okay because I wanted to also show you how to clean up the areas that maybe you go outside or like if I went inside like that it's not a big deal I am holding down the button here and drawing around until I get to the point on the other side where it closes off the loop and now this dancing selection indicates that all of the pixels inside the selection are selected and if I performed a task like a filter or change levels or something like that it would affect only the selected pixels but here's something that's important to note is up here at the top of the screen um, you have some options along with the main tool that's selected so the lasso tool is selected but I can see that I have icons to add to selection and subtract from selection now it's not the most convenient thing in the world to go back and forth and back and forth up and down to add or remove from the selection but if you're using your mouse it's very easy to reach over and use the alt key or the shift key on your keyboard to add or remove from the selection so notice what happens if I press the alt key on the keyboard I've got my little crosshair but there's a minus next to it and if I instead press the shift key it changes to the crosshair with the plus and that allows me to either add to the selection or remove from the selection so in the case where I want to clean up the rough edges on the outside if I start from the outside of the selection and I hold down the alt key what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda of, you know fly in here by clicking and dragging and I can be sloppy up until I get to the point where I'm actually in the selection because what I'm doing now is I'm actually trimming away I'm removing those pixels and once I get outside again I can just kinda of complete that look I was able to very quickly clean up that little spot right there and I could do that up here again by holding down the alt key to subtract from selection and then I could click and hold the mouse button down and I can just click and drag around and I just do that you know take a couple of minutes here or however fast you work just take your time to move around the object and clean up your selection now conversely let me just get that little piece down at the bottom again by subtracting the selection right there and I'm gonna hold down the shift key so if I move my pointer on the inside of the selection and I hold the shift key I get the plus now what I can do is I can kinda just glide in here just hold the mouse button down and then again once I dance along that selection I just kinda cruise along I'm kinda highlighting that what I'm doing is I'm adding those pixels to the selection alright so it's cleaner than it was before alt key to subtract clean that little section up right there shift key to go in here and drag around and it takes a little bit of time but it's taken a lot longer here just because I'm describing what I'm doing and I was a little bit intentionally sloppy when I did this because I wanted to show you this process but um, what I can do is when I get done making my selection is I can save it I'll use the shift key there to add that little piece right there and maybe shift and swoop around again and that's bugging me so I'm gonna add that and maybe just subtract from this little piece up top now it's not perfect but then again it doesn't need to be actually the camera when it does a similar task by performing the defocus is going through mathematically and trying to figure out where the main object was and we're using our eyeball to do this and that also allows you a lot more creative control because you can really zero in on the spots that you want to clean up alright so now I've spent some time cleaning that selection up and I definitely don't want to do that again so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose select and say save selection and what this does is it actually creates an additional channel in another one of the tutorials we talked about channels like this image is made up of red green and blue so I've got three channels and what I can do is I can create an additional channel which contains only those pixels it's actually uh, different shades of gray and I'm gonna save all those selected pixels in a channel so I'm just gonna call this bird feeder here 
don't need to shout that. We'll just say bird feeder. And uh, it's a new channel. I click OK. Note, notice down here in the lower left, too, the size of the file is 57.7 is meg. It's a pretty big file because it's a high megapixel camera. When I click OK, notice that now I've got 68.5 megabyte. And that is because if I go over here and choose my channels palette, I've got the red, green, blue, but there's my bird feeder. It's actually saved those pixels in the form of a selection. So if I needed to open up the file and make changes again, I wouldn't have to go through that whole process of using a lasso tool to clean up the selection. All right. So now that I've got that selection in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I don't have a rough edge. I don't want a hard line. And what I can do is I can go to Select, Modify, and I'll choose Feather. Feathering allows you to have a smoother gradation in your selected pixels from the outside area of non-selected pixels. And if I choose Feather, I'm just going to choose a value here. Since there's so many pixels in this file, I'm going to just type in a value of 18. So 18 little picture elements are going to be feathered in. It's going to go from, uh, uh, instead of a hard line, it's going to be a smooth selection. And I say OK. Now, I can actually blur out the selected pixels, but if I did that right now, what would be blurry? I would be blurring out the bird feeder, and that's not my intention. I actually want to blur out the background behind it. So what I'll do is I'll choose Select, and I will invert the selection. And as I do this, notice around the edge of the screen. Right now, I don't have the selection dots, but when I choose Inverse, now I've got those dots around the outside edge. And it basically lets me know that everything from the outside of the picture here to the inside selection that I drew is selected. But inside the bird feeder, that is not selected right now. It's all of the pixels on the outside edge. And this is where I can get into my creative blurring. And I've got different filters. I can choose Filter, go down to Blur, and I've got many different options here. The Gaussian Blur is a very simple, straightforward type of blur that allows you to blur out your background. As I click and I drag my slider, I can see that I'm actually really blurring that out to the point where it's maybe even a little bit ridiculous. But remember, I had low, medium, and high on the camera. Here I've got very granular control. So I can click and I can drag and I can make that super duper blurry. Or I can just kind of dial it back so that the attention is focused on the object itself. But instead of Gaussian Blur, another thing that I can do here in Photoshop CC, Creative Cloud, is go up to Filter, go to Blur, and I can choose a Lens Blur. And this has a lot of different settings which allow you to approximate the lens itself. So you've got blades inside the lens. You can actually change your iris shape um, by going over here to Shape. And you can choose the number of elements here. So instead of five, I could actually say I, I want to go to six, seven, or eight. That affects the overall quality of my blur. And again, I can choose radius just like I did with the Gaussian blur. But this gives it a more photographic quality. And if you click and drag the slider left and right, you're going to increase or decrease your blur. And you also have the ability to go in here and change some other parameters. You can change uh, highlights in the background, the threshold, which you probably don't want to go in and change because you might get some uh, crazy looking spots right there. I tend to leave that over on the right hand side. And you can also change the distribution. I like the Gaussian blur, so it's not a flat kind of noise distribution. I use the Gaussian blur. And you can also toggle back and forth to turn your preview on and off so you can see uh, before and after. So that's easy. That's very cool. And I can click OK. I'll turn off my selection by choosing Select, Deselect. And now I can see that I've actually gone in and cleaned up my image here a little bit better than what happened inside the camera. Because as you recall, if I open up the other image, this is the one that was shot by the camera itself. Up here, it didn't do a good job. Mathematically, it was not that precise. But if I go to my image here, I can see that I've achieved the same effect. And I didn't have that little error right there. So I'm going to cut it short now. Hopefully, this was helpful. That's how you do background defocus on your Sony camera. Or if you don't have that feature on your camera, but you have an image editor like Photoshop, you can go ahead and be creative and blur that background out on your own. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.